Hello, everybody. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, let me check, actually, that I have sound. Um, that was probably the best intro I've ever I do. Good. Hey, I just want to group get this out before <laughs> before I hit the airport. It's going to be rough and ready, but these are the mind-blowing top 20 features that you may not know about. And I will be buying more Tesla shares today. I can't believe it's down. There's so much to cover. So thank you all for coming this early time in the morning and uh, stayed up all night getting this ready. So let's go. Um, and thank you all for coming. Let's talk about how amazing the day was, first of all. An honor to be there, meet so many great people. And see, get deep into, like, I'm not an engineer. I've never been on a factory floor, but I'm very curious. And I'm going to share what I found from all my curiosity with you. First, before we get into the nitty gritty, you'll see here, these are the actual specs and prices. There was a lot of fear that the range would be under 300 miles. It's actually 340, but there's a bonus kicker that I'll talk about as well in a minute. Um, so the range, if we look at two vehicles, it's going to be the Cyber Beast and the all-wheel drive version. The rear-wheel drive, which is going to be $61,000, will not be available until 2025. So scratch that for now. Let's just focus on the Beast, which has Beast Mode. That's the one that smashed the Porsche on the track carrying a Porsche. Uh, 99000 called it 100 grand, And all-wheel drive, 79900 Obviously, the one for 100000 will not qualify for the U.S. tax credit. But the type of people that buy this probably don't care. Uh, it can do a quarter of a mile in less than 11 seconds. Top speed, 130 miles an hour. Remember, this is a very big machine. It can tow 11,000 pounds. And it has a thing called range extender, which is super interesting. Let's um, First of all, met a lot of great people. Shout out to Franz von Holzhausen, who created this thing. Everything in the vehicle is designed from scratch. Everything looks and feels like the Cybertruck shape. There is no Tesla badging, no logo, no nothing, just Cybertruck. It, the whole thing speaks for itself, and that's quite stunning. Uh, from the beginning to end, it is impeccable. Um, now, let's talk about some of the things as well. The what, There was a cool clip at the beginning that Elon showed and showed you the ultimate troll on planet Earth. That's probably why people dislike him. You went out and bought two uh, Porsche Turbos, which are extremely fast sports cars, and uh, the Cybertruck beat the Porsche, but then the surprise at the end was it beat it over a quarter of a mile, towing another Porsche. So the Porsche can't carry itself as fast as the Cybertruck can carry itself, carrying the Porsche and a trailer. And that is stunning, and it did it in 2.6 seconds. So uh, pretty, pretty mind-blowing specifications. In addition, what's also important is the toughness and durability. I know that Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, actually mocked Elon Musk. Um, saying, yeah, it's a great thing for st stuff like uh, going to going downtown to dinner and everything else on a, what do you say, Saturday night in downtown Palo Alto. He completely also mocked and trolled Elon Musk. But anyway, this is crazy. Um, yeah, somebody's saying, Jimmy the hobo, but the Porsche can go a lot further than 340 miles. Well, if you can drive 340 miles straight without a charge, without taking a pee, Jimmy, well done. <laughs> anyway, back to business. Uh, the impressive thing, there was talk of a Tommy gun shooting it, but not only that, they shot an MP5 and a Glock 9mm. None of these bullets went through the body of the car, which is extremely impressive. And uh, I know a little bit about guns, which is incredible. Now let's talk about the glass. The glass is shatter resistant. That means you will not get a chip when you're driving uh, down the freeway and a truck in front of you kicks up a rock. I can't tell you how many windscreens I've lost due to rocks. This thing is shatter resistant. This can take a baseball at 70 miles an hour or a class four hail, which is the size of a golf ball, and no damage will happen at all. It can also resist any chips, rocks, etc. And it's very quiet on the inside, which is pretty stunning. Now, there's a few things. I try to pick up things that nobody else is talking about, which stunned me. I actually mentioned it to some of the people last night at the post event, and they didn't realize it either. So let's talk about some of those things. First of all, the thinness is remarkable. I went through the whole factory floor twice, and literally this thing is nearly a mile long. Um, but if you look here across this vehicle, we'll be able to look right through the car. If you look at the base of the floor, 
to the internal carpet where people's feet go in the vehicle, you're talking about six or seven inches. It is extremely thin. And I'm like, wow, talk about, if you know vehicles, it's so important to have a very low center of gravity. I'm pretty sure this thing has a lower center of gravity considering the mass in relative terms to like a Formula One car. That is absolutely stunning. So let's dig into that as well. This is the actual floor of the car with two seats attached. That's the cooling system at the back. This is the battery pack for the Cybertruck. It's that simple. Uh, very, very impressive in how it looks. Now, let's talk more about the actual thinness. This is the door, side door of the vehicle. Not only is this thing bulletproof, it's incredibly thin. This special custom alloy that was made by Tesla, this metal did not exist on the planet until somehow the car company Tesla built it. But literally, you could nearly put some shaving cream in your face and you could shave your face off the side of the door, which does give me a little bit of a concern that maybe it's almost too sharp. And of course, you can touch it. You're not going to cut yourself, but it's so thin, it will blow your mind. Now, other stuff too. This thing can charge your house. It can charge other vehicles, etc. You can plug a 220 plug in to it. If you're in the US, you know what that means. It's one of those things with all the weird little prongs. Um, also 120, multiple outlets inside the vehicle, outside the vehicle. So that's pretty spectacular. I know that Ford boasts that as a feature, but this could be your, your little power wall for your home in the event that something really bad goes wrong. And I think it kicks out about 11 kilowatts, uh, something like that. Now, uh, what's also very, very important is the four wheel steering. I thought, this is what I call the 11th feature or something. I thought the four wheel steering would be only on the tri motor or the quad motor special version. It's standard on all the cyber trucks. That means this thing can turn on a dime. It is extremely maneuverable, but there's more. Not only that, it has rear wheel steering, obviously, and uh, that's what it looks like. I went through the whole factory floor and got pictures and videos of everything. I'll do a more detailed snippets of things that I found pretty incredible, but this is what the rear wheel steering actually looks like. It is pretty complicated. Now, speaking of steering, let's talk about the wheels. These are the tires. This is uh, my colleague Bill with me here who is a former uh, Ford engineer, his mind was blown by the, this whole factory floor. They say they do things, everything different and everything is completely automated. Literally, the cars just go through this process where machines put wheels on, put glasses on, put side panels on, attach everything together. It is completely mind blowing and no wonder the unions are nervous. I, I kind of get that, but there are still a lot of people in the factory. Um, it's pretty incredible, but this tire, is nearly three feet tall, nearly one meter for those in Euroland, 35.6 inches precisely, and we measured it. It's a beast, and how can a car with such huge tires go so fast? I don't know, it's mind melting. Now, the other thing that people were saying, somebody here in the chat said, but it only goes 340 miles. Yeah, they have a thing called Rage Extender within this vehicle. So basically here, somebody asked, uh, Fred Lambert asked, hey Elon, can you please explain the deal with the range extender? Lots of confusion out here. He said it's an optional pack that fits in about one third of the truck bed, still room for plenty of cargo. So under the back of the truck bed, there's a huge space. So what they're doing there is they're putting an additional battery in to extend the range by 38% which is pretty stunning, especially if you need that, if you're towing things, or if you're somebody that has a huge trailer and you like to go to the mountains, you'll have plenty of power to get you there. Um, I'm not sure of the pricing of these range extenders, but uh, we'll find out pretty soon as well. In addition, drag coefficient is 0.335. I heard somewhere it was 0.32 way back when, but anyway, it's confirmed at 0.335. And this is unreal for a truck, a vehicle of this size. And You'd think something so big would have a higher drag coefficient, but it doesn't. I mean, I think the Model X is 0.31 or 0.29 or the Model S, but this is absolutely stunning as well. Now, more fun stuff. This is the largest windscreen wiper in the world. And there's a few things that may surprise you uh, and they may actually turn out to be quite logical. So this is vertical, the way it sits 
which helps it to be more aerodynamic. But a lot of people are concerned, oh, what happens if it snows? What do you do? Well, if you've ever had a vehicle in the snow and you've had the wipers at the bottom and there's a big trough in the bottom of the car as well, well, snow packs in there and it locks down the wipers and you can't get anything off until you fully melt the screen. And sometimes if you melt the screen in the ice and snow, it can crack your windscreen. Trust me, I know I've seen that happen many times. So be careful if you are out there in wintertime. Do not blast your heat on the window. The temperature change will crack it. Now, what's also very interesting is the car is completely flat at the front, as we saw from the drag coefficient here. That means if it is snowing, and of course the snow isn't a rock like on the east coast of the United States, but it's puffy and nice and like in Utah, it would just push it all down and straight off the front of the car. And that is logical and special. And it works in mud and rain, of course, like anything else. The other unique feature is the, you know, for the first 60 years of car life, it was a six volt battery. And then in 1960, switched to a 12 volt battery. And now Tesla's the first car ever on the planet to have a 48 volt battery. And this has so many benefits, smaller wires, less weight, reduced resistance, improved efficiency. In fact, it's completely logical to do 48 volts, but nobody ever did it because car companies don't innovate. But Tesla's not a car company, so that's the difference here. Anyhow, more power to access or to, to, for things like air conditioning, headlights, infotainment systems, when you go camping, smaller wires and components, of course, are less expensive to manufacture and uh, more efficient use of battery power extends the range, very important too. Also quicker acceleration, that's why this thing can do what it does. And improved regenerative brake braking, which is massive. Uh, I showed a, a tweet a few weeks or months ago where I went 70 miles and my battery actually went up, which is pretty impressive. Now, let's talk about the sharp edges again. Everything is sharp. If you're familiar with the stealth planes and ships, etc. They are sharp too. So this cannot be detected by enemy radar, which is great <laughs> because there's nothing, there's nothing curved on the whole car. Everything is an edge, which is pretty stunning. Um, where are we now? Giga castings. This is the, the first front part of the giga casting and there's one at the rear and these things literally just attach together and everything is built on them. And they are actually super strong and quite light considering the size of them. And this is the exoskeleton. There was a lot of confusion about the exoskeleton of this vehicle. Yes, it does have a rigid exoskeleton, which bring, makes it the stiffest vehicle out there as well, because not only does it have the front and back giga castings, but also the exterior of the vehicle is structural, which also makes it very special. Now, it has other things like wraps. This is me yesterday with the black wrap one. The black wrap, by the way, is sick, but I still think I'd be traditional. And if I was lucky enough to get one, it would be stainless steel. In addition, for those who are outdoors people, it has a camper van extension. I think this is about $2,000, but it converts the whole back into a lovely bed that can sleep two or two parents and a small child. Stuff all your stuff underneath, and it has like a little mattress. It's quite thin, but super soft and comfortable. And it's very long, it's over six feet long. So it's like having a little queen bed in the back of your car. Pretty stunning as well. And it has bug screens and everything. And uh, it can shelter you from the elements, which is incredible. And if you are going camping, it has a bottle cap opener in the back as well. So, um, and in fact, I suggested to one of the engineers when I was talking to him, there's a huge storage area in the trunk too. And I said, they need to refrigerate that. And you could have a whole cooler in the back of your vehicle too, which is neat. Now, the air suspension is also very special. It is electronically adaptive, up to 17 inches of real clearance. There's nothing hanging down. The bottom of this car is extremely flat, which means you can drive over anything. And you can see the size of the wheel arches too. And I talked about the size of the wheels. That just gives you a perspective of how big this thing is. It is massive, but it's still shorter than a Ford F-150 by about three inches, I think, uh, from my measurements. Now, it also has monster touchscreens front and back. They are incredible. I was inside the car with the sound system on, 15 speakers. The speakers are also completely, um, there's nothing curved in the speakers. You can't even see many of the speakers. And the sound is just incredible for those audiophiles out there. Also, it has a HEPA filter for 
the end times, um, which will keep the air inside very, very clean from toxins. In the event something bad does go down or there is something in the air that you don't want to breathe in, you have that capability too. Model X, by the way, and Model S have this too. And in addition, as Elon said, this is more truck than a truck. There is no truck as tough or as durable on the planet as this vehicle. Also, it's quicker than a sports car. So it's a better sports car than a sports car. Never before has anybody created a vehicle like this, as complex as this, or as versatile. Yes, Jim Farley was right. You can take it down to dinner on Friday night in Palo Alto, but you can also take it across the toughest terrain in the world, and you can take it to the racetrack. That is mind-blowing. And a big shout out as well to all the great people I met. Uh, I met everybody that I've known for quite some time, but never actually met them face to face. You know, uh, people like Rob Maurer, the OG in the space, and of course, Teardown Titan, uh, Alexander Metz, and everybody, Jeff Lutz, all the great people there, Gary Black, uh, Farzad. Uh, it was just an incredible experience. So I'm very grateful for that. And that's it. I'm now going to head to the airport. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you later. I'm going to try to uh, record something that's crypto related from Denver in a few hours. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody and uh, appreciate the support and hit the like on the way out. Bye-bye.